steam-powered olive oil presses replaced olive oil mills in processing the fruit of the olive tree in lesvos steam-powered olive oil presses had appeared already in the mid-nineteenth century the functioning of the specific olive oil presses was usually configured into two main areas the area occupied by the steam engine and the area where the processing of the fruit was completed this is how the engine worked the boiler heated the water and turned it into steam through a pipe the steam was transferred to a system of two interconnected engines first to the smaller engine which through a second pipe fed the larger one a pipe connected the second engine to a tank where the residues of the steam were transferred in order to be liquefied again this tank would pump water from an auxiliary underground tank and supplement the reserve of a second central tank the latter supplied the boiler with water continuously the engine system set a wheel in motion which was connected through a belt to a second wheel usually located at a higher point on the wall separating the steam engine area from the fruit processing area from there again through belts motion was transferred to all the machines involved in the olive oil production process by the use of smaller wheels the process began at the crusher where workers emptied the sacks of olives in order for them to be crushed the crusher usually had two cylindrical millstones which were set in motion by the belt connecting them to the central system moving the wheels the resulting olive pulp was transferred in an iron wheelbarrow to a metal tank where it was stored then specialized workers placed the olive pulp in coarse bags usually made of goatskin which were later replaced by similar cloth constructions called envelopes then the next procedure was called stacking the envelopes were placed on the press one on top of the other forming a stack workers had to be careful to spread out the olive pulp evenly inside the envelopes and make sure there were no envelopes jutting out from the stack as this would cause a failure in the compression process a pump activated with the aid of the central system setting the wheels in motion through belts pumped water from an underground tank and channeled it through a pipe up to the press pushing its base up so as to compress the envelopes and have the olive oil flow into a wooden or stone basin with two or three partitions which was located at the basis of the press when the compression process was completed the workers deactivated the pump and then the lift shaft would gradually return to its position after the first dry compression there were two or three additional compression phases workers would take the envelopes down from the press push the olive pulp by hand to the middle of the envelope and souse the olive pulp with hot water in order to facilitate the effusion of olive oil this process was called thermization then they placed the envelopes on the press again and repeated the compression process quite often thermization would continue during the compression when workers soused the stack with hot water the olive oil water mixture flowing into the basin would fill the first partition however because oil is lighter than water it formed a layer on the surface of the first partition and through an opening it flowed to the second partition free to a large extent from the water a similar process was repeated from the second to the third partition given there was a third partition from the interwar period onwards special centrifugal separators known as laval the name of the manufacturer started being used these machines further facilitated the separation of oil from water the oil was carried in special metal containers and stored in other larger metal containers having one rounded side and one straight side to facilitate loading on pack animals in other cases the olive oil was carried in goatskin bags and then finally stored in large clay jars for domestic use or transferred again in barrels in order to be exported <laughs>